Our sermon text from today is John chapter 10, verses 10 through 18. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again, and I have received this command from my Father. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day so that we may hear your word and put your words into practice now and always. Amen. Pastor James Merritt begins one of his sermons by retelling a supposedly true story about Abraham. Lincoln. I had never heard this story before, so see what you think. Lincoln was surprised one day when a rough-looking man drew a revolver and stuck it right in his face. Trying to remain calm as he could, Lincoln simply asked the man what seems to be the matter. The stranger replied, well, some years ago, I swore an oath that if I ever came across an uglier man than I, I would shoot him right on the spot. Lincoln smiled and said, well then, please shoot me, for if I am an uglier man than you, I deserve not to live. <laughs> One of the reasons that this story is funny is in the absurdity that a person doesn't deserve to live based solely on their outward appearance. As we live our lives, we want to believe that we deserve a chance to be part of this world. We also want to believe that how we live is a very important part of who we are. In today's scripture reading, we learn that how we live matters to God. In his book, The Gospel According to Starbucks, Leonard Sweet says, life is a loaded word. It can mean everything from resignation to exhilaration. One of the Greek words used to describe life is zoe, which means a passionate life. And so the question for us today is, which life do you wish to live? The one of resignation, well, that's life. Or the one of exhilaration, I love life. I hope all of us want to live with the passion and the commitment, with excitement and wonder. I know that's how God wants us to live because the Bible is replete with examples of this. And today's scripture is one such instance. This reading can be divided into three sections, verses 10 through 15, verse 16, and verses 17 through 18. So I want to highlight in each of these sections something about Jesus so that we can understand how God wants us to have life and have it in abundance. In this parable that appears in John's Gospel, Jesus compares life and his relationship to humanity to a shepherd that cares for his sheep. This analogy would be instantly understood in Jesus' time. A shepherd spent all his time with the sheep and it was absolutely his responsibility to make sure that they were cared for, that they were protected. To the shepherd, it was the most natural thing to risk his life to defend his flock. It was even expected that a shepherd should lay down his life to protect his sheep. There was also a distinction between a true shepherd and a false shepherd. A true shepherd was one that was born to the task. 
He was sent out with the flock as soon as he was old enough to go. The sheep became his friends, his companions, and it became second nature to think of them before the shepherd thought of himself. The false shepherd was a person who came into the job and did what he did for money. This person would typically run away at the first sign of trouble or danger as he didn't understand the scope of what the job entailed. Because this was not a calling, it was simply a way to earn a living. Christ is our shepherd, and Christ is our shepherd because at the appropriate and designated time, Jesus was sent to us. He lived among us and we became his friends and companions. In Jesus' ministry, he spent all of his time serving others and helping people in need. And we all know that he laid down his life so that all may live. Our lives should be, most, should be lived in the most exciting, the most exhilarating ways possible because Jesus is our shepherd, because we have a God who cares for us, who is our friend, and who has sacrificed all so that we may have that abundant life. And Jesus is the good shepherd because of all he does for us and because he is relentless in his care. Twice in these verses we read today, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. That is a complete sentence. Five words with a period at the end of the final word. It does not read, I am the good shepherd, colon, on every third Friday of the month, or when you are good, or when you have earned my protection, or if I have nothing better to do. God's love for us is constant. It does not lessen over time or decrease in value. When Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd, that means forever. Jesus is the good shepherd because with him, life can be exhilarating. It is that Zoe, it is that passion that we can have because the shepherd is watching out for us. Now, the second thing to note is that the good shepherd is here for everyone. In verse 16, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. One of the great things about Jesus is that in him there is unity. There is that sense of being connected. There is that strength of community, of faith. It seems that we are divided in many aspects of our life. We know that out in our societies, there are the rich and the poor, the young and the old, there are men and women. There are divisions about nations and classes and skin color. There are people who go to college and those who don't. There are people who learn a trade. There are those that are blue collar workers and white collar workers, and the list goes on and on. But when we belong to the Good Shepherd, we cross those barriers, we erase all those boxes and labels that we are placed in, because in here and in here, we are Christian, we are part of God's family, we are members of God's flock. And that should be all that matters. Jesus is the Good Shepherd because we all belong to that one family of God. And finally, in verses 17 and 18, we see an obedience and a confidence in Christ, and we can display that same type of behavior when we can live with that exhilaration. Verse 17, for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, I lay it down of my own accord, and I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again, and I have received this from my Father. Jesus was on earth because he had a job to do. He demonstrated that God's Messiah came to vindicate God's people with love and with forgiveness. He came to show that the best way to destroy an enemy was to make them your friend, showing copious amounts of mercy and grace. He came to show that we could understand that the law was not an enemy to be feared, but it was a guide to righteous living, living with a loving Father. And he came to show that following the law was important to who we are, but it should never take the place of human need and helping other people. 
Jesus came to complete a very difficult, a very important task. And he was able to do what he did on earth because he was obedient to God. His obedience showed a strong faith and his strong faith showed a complete trust in God. Jesus' obedience allowed him to follow God's plan. He didn't argue, he didn't suggest that he knew better, he didn't decide to do things his own way, he was obedient. He never did what he wanted, he put all of his energy, all of his trust, all of his faith, and he did what God wanted. In his obedience, he knew what a right relationship with God was all about. And that's helpful because in that obedience, he also displayed confidence confidence in his God. What he did in his earthly ministry, think of what Jesus did. He, you know, think of the people he healed, the miracles he performed, the individuals he taught, the disciples he inspired, the love he displayed, the lonelinesses he faced, the pain he suffered, the death he experienced, the sacrifice he endured. I couldn't have accomplished a tenth of what he did. But Jesus had that obedience and that confidence, not in himself, but a confidence that God would always see him through and put things right. He knew that God was with him. He knew that God would not give him something he could not do. He knew that God was in the midst of the evil. He knew that God would never leave his side. And he knew that God would never stop loving him. Jesus never ran away from the cross and he never doubted that God would see him through. He is our good shepherd because he bestows in us that confidence and that obedience that we need to thrive. Now there was once a man and this man had a daily routine. Every morning at 10 o'clock he would go down a few blocks from his house to his local convenience store and he would buy a paper. And in doing this routine that he had been doing for a long time he got to know the owner of the convenience store. And one day when he walked in to get his paper, he saw that the owner was staring out the window of the store and he had tears welling up in his eyes. And so he said, you know, is, is anything wrong? Is there anything I can do? And the man said, I'm staring out this window at the bus bench. Every day, this little old lady comes to the bus bench and she sits there for two or three hours and she knits. She never gets on a bus, no one ever gets off a bus to see her, and she just sits there passing the time knitting. And so last week I decided that I wanted to know this lady. So I took her a cup of coffee and I sat down with her and I learned her story. She's a poor widow, she doesn't have any money, she is so poor that she hasn't seen her son, her only child, in about five years. And he is too far away for him to come to her or for her to go and see him. They haven't seen each other in five years. She's never met her daughter-in-law and she's never met her three-year-old grandson. And so she sits here every day knitting as a hope that one day that she will meet. And she knits things for the boy and she's got all sorts of things for him. And one day she hopes to meet them. And the owner of the shop, as he's talking, looks at this man and he says, today is the day. If you look out the window, you'll see a young man and a woman and a little boy and they are embracing and they all look so happy and so filled with joy. And I'm feeling the way I'm feeling because I will never forget until the end of my days, the look on that woman's face, the love in her eyes when she saw that little boy. And so... The man goes home, reads his paper. The more he's home, the more he's thinking about this. And he's thinking about it, and he's thinking about it, and it's driving him crazy. He doesn't sleep a wink all night because he gets a thought in his head that he can't shake. So the next morning, he goes to pick up his paper, and he marches right up to the counter, and he looks at the owner of the convenience store, and he says, it was you, wasn't it? You bought their tickets. And he said, I did. I bought their tickets and I am so pleased with the joy that they gave me and the joy that I could bring to them. And the man says, I knew it. I knew you did that. I've been up all night agonizing over it. And the store owner smiles and he says, that's wonderful, but 
Why would the fact that I bought them tickets cause you to stay up all night? I mean, that should be a good thing. That should be a joyous thing. And the man said, I come in here every day for my paper. I can do anything that I want in my life. I am wealthy, I am rich, I have lived a good life, I have everything I want, and I can buy anything in this world that I want. I have lived a full life. But watching you and watching what you did and watching that family, I may have lived a full life, but you all have life in abundance and you've lived it abundantly. And that is what God gives to us. Not just life, but the ability to live it with confidence, with obedience, with being part of God's family, and with that exhilaration that says, I love life. It says in Scripture, I can do all things, all exhilarating things, through Him who gives me strength. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us to move forth and help us not to live life, to, to experience the thrill of the life that you provide now and always. Amen.